As a yoga teacher, one of the most powerful tools you can have is your voice. Let your voice reflect the moment of the class. The first part of the class is the warm up. You can't be coming out like gangbusters in the very first few seconds of the class. You want your voice to be warming up your students as well. So your voice is slowly going to start to build. We're going to start out nice and easy. In the hot yoga world, we start with the breathing exercise. There's really not that much to do as a teacher. Sometimes that can be a little bit boring. You can maybe throw in some fun explanations of the first deep breathing that we do. Many times I'll talk about the arms like a bellows from the old fireplace. That's what we're using to fill our lungs and to empty our lungs. My teacher would say, full lungs, to build up those lungs. I know what that meant for such a long time. Full lungs. We use our voice to build that energy. This is the warm-up process. We don't want to be firing out too much energy. But at the same time, we don't want to be too soft either because we're letting them know we're about to take off and work our way slowly upward in the warm-up process. Now in the Bark and Hot Yoga class, we start with sun salutation. The first set's a little bit slower than the second set. As we start to get into the second set, that's when my voice is gonna start to build an energy. In the Bikram class, after the breathing, you start with half moon pose. So as you start to get into half moon pose, you can let your voice reflect that moment. As they get to the back bends, you can start to, which we exaggerate by the way in hot yoga, or the back bends, extreme back bends. You can start to then coach and then start to pump up the energy because now you're building that energy with your voice. What I need you to do right now is hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to the channel. Hit the like button. If you're enjoying these type of videos and you want to learn more about the whole hot yoga world and postures, do that right now. Now, what I'm saying is definitely easier said than done. That's why my teach training programs, I'm working directly with you and trying to get you out of that repeated pattern, out of your self-consciousness, which can cause a repeated pattern. You can sort of hide behind that repeated pattern of words to bring your own personality out, to let them know what's important about each pose. You're changing up. Now you've got dynamics. Now you have this authentic experience that you're bringing to your students. It changes everything. And now as we peek into the part of the class where we're in the warrior energy is what I call it. This is like halfway into our standing poses. You can't still be so strong in gangbusters the whole time because you have to understand dynamics. So there's times where you can pump it up. There's times where you can go into what I call the explanation voice. So the teacher voice is nice and strong and pumped. You're going to push it. You're going to correct. But then when they're in the pose, you can then take a moment to change the energy. And then I call this in my teacher training program variety of Home. If you're speaking in the same pattern of speech, I talk about this a lot in my videos, at one point they're going to tune you out like elevator music, especially if they're doing a class that they know. They know what the next posture is. If you're just in that repeated pattern, they've tuned you out, or they're going to start to space out. They're going to think about, well, where am I going to lunch? What's for lunch today? What am I going to have for lunch? Because he's just talking in a repeated pattern. We've got to break the pattern. How can we do that? We can explain something in a posture that's important. I talk about find the gem. I tell my teacher training people, find the gem in each pose and explain what it is. And you can use your personal experience. When I'm doing this pose, I find that if I bring my shoulders back, that's going to help take the pressure off my neck. Try that. See if that works for you. All of a sudden, you change the pattern of speech. You just broke it. That's where we find the dynamics. And because we're teaching a warrior-esque type of yoga, you got to get rid of words and phrases that don't lend to the experience. For example, one of the things that drives me nuts when teachers say, when you're ready. Well, what if I'm not ready? What if I don't want to do it? Or they'll say, if it's comfortable, if I'm doing standing head to knee, if I'm doing standing bow, I'm doing triangle. It's not comfortable. It doesn't mean that it's not uncomfortable, but it's not comfortable. You want to get rid of words like if Mercury is in retrograde and just tell them to do the pose. Be more definitive. Instead of saying when you're ready, tilt your arms, just tilt your arms. Get rid of those tentative phrases. Now in the hot yoga world, Bikram yoga, Barkin yoga, we have first part of the class or standing poses, what I call the Shiva energy. Now we get to the second half of the class. It's the floor poses or the Shakti energy, the masculine, the feminine, the yang, the yin. Now we get down to our first Shavasana. That's a whole nother voice. You're not going to be talking to them in that first Shavasana like you were in standing head to knee, like you were in triangle pose. That's the warrior voice. Now you're in the Shakti voice. And Shavasana is the ultimate, the consummate Shakti pose of all. So now your voice needs to reflect that moment. Now you've got this different tone you're going to bring into the class. I always say keep your eyes open in the first Shavasana because it's not over. But now it's just completely relaxing, letting go of all tension, letting go of all responsibility for yourself. Let the floor take you.
So now we're on the floor, standing poses are over it. Now Shavasana is over. And in the Bikram and the Barkham world, we start with the Cobra pose. However, the Cobra series, Cobra Locus, Full Locus Bow, by the way, it's a very common sequence that's practiced by many different styles of yoga. It's not just unique to hot yoga, but the Cobra series, for example, Cobra, Locus, Bow, is still a strong warrior type floor poses. So we don't want to be soft and gentle when we're teaching the cobra pose like we were when we were leading people in Shavasana. We can now bring up our energy a little bit more. Now we may not be bringing it up as strong as we were in triangle pose. Maybe not quite as strong or it could be. Or let's say locust pose with both legs up. You can really start to cheerlead him in that moment. And that brings us to another point. Your cheerleading voice can come in or you can extend words in your phrases. Use your voice to reflect each and every moment. So now you can see the pattern. You can see the dynamics that's taking place. Now, as we get toward the end of the floor poses, as we get into spine twists in the Barkin world, we'll do one-legged pigeon pose. Now your voice can start to slowly wind down again. We want up strong in the Cobra series. We're going to wind down a little bit as we get to spine twists, as we get to pigeon pose. And in pigeon, it's almost like a Shavasana voice as well. It's almost a guided sort of Shakti energy. But that brings us to the final moment, the last Shavasana which I believe is the most important moment of the class. And now there's a different energy. That's just the, once again, the consummate Shakti voice. We're gonna let our voice reflect that moment and let your voice guide them through an experience where you don't wanna be talking too much. Because one thing that's important, you are guiding their experience and you're letting your voice reflect the moment, but you don't want to dictate their experience to them. Which brings us to another point. You don't wanna say in a class, I know this is a tough pose, but let's do it anyway. Well, it may not be tough for them. It may it was tough for you or I know you're struggling right now but keep going well maybe they're not struggling or maybe they weren't struggling but now that you said that you just sort of planted the seed now they are struggling don't allow yourself to dictate their experience instead guide their experience guide it with your voice guide it with the tone and in the last shavasana and once again everybody's different you want your voice to reflect your personality and let your personality come through maybe you would say more words than some other people maybe they'll say less words than other people it really depends on what you want to do i like to guide people through a what we call spinal pranayam at the end of each class where we bring the breath up the spine in the inhale down the spine on the exhale it was one of yogananda's techniques given to him by babaji which is spinal pranayam which is a very unique pranayam exercise from our particular lineage so that's what I do. So you got to find something that you're going to do. Sometimes people will do body scans. Relax the toes, relax the feet, and you work your way up to the ankle. But again, your voice is going to reflect the Shakti moment. We get all these different tones, variety of tone to reflect the moment of the class because that's how you want to make it interesting. We want to get rid of that pattern of speech. And once again, easier said than done. If you want me to be your coach, look down at the links in the description below. I'd love to be your mentor. So that's our episode for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the like button. Comments, I get to all the comments, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye, everyone.